All right, hello everybody. Um, first, let me apologize for that last video. It it was a mess. There was a lot of things going on. It was not shot at the best time. Um, and like I said, I was. There were a lot of things going on. I was rushing to try and get it done. And it, it turned out bad. But I don't have an, like an extra leg to go over dimensioning with, uh, dimensioning with you. So that video has to stand on its own. But what I will do now is just show you about falling to length using the two methods I told you about. And then a little bit about laying out the joints. Now as you hear I have three legs I am clamped up, make sure they don't move, try and eliminate that kind of um, air out, and just clamp to my bench, that way I have an extra hand holding it down. So these are all set up, and so what I'll do is I'll hold my, set my saw where I need it. Set my knuckle, my thumb knuckle, against the blade. And I'll just start to draw back. Now, this is a tri hem saw, so it cuts on the push and the pull. So it starts a lot easier than a traditional cross cut saw. See, I'm moving back, keeping it straight up against the line. I'm trying to use as much of my saw blade as possible without forcing it. I'm blowing the dust away so I can make sure I'm staying on my line. Now, as I go, I'm just going to gently rock it back until I'm going flat, and then I'll start sawing down. I have a reference line on this side that I can see, so I'm just going to go down it. that you would use if you wanted to cut them all at once. Okay. Another way to do it is to cut them all individually. And the way you would do that. Okay. Just take your tape measure. Find your one reference side. One that you mark with an X. Measure here, it's going to be 21 and a quarter. And actually, double check. I have my plans here. That's where the term measure twice, cut once. Okay. 21 and a quarter. Yep. Okay. You double check, that's what it is. So. Lay out to 21 and a quarter. 
Mark your line. And now, this is my one reference side, so I'll put the fence against that. Set it up here. And draw a line. Now, instead of measuring it again, I'll just flip it over. This is my other reference side. And I'll put my combination square up to where I am now, flush with that line, and mark down. All right. Now that I got my two reference lines, I'm going to use the miter box. And I did find it, obviously. Okay. So. Now, you can use your big panel saw if you want, or you can use a back saw. Um, back saw has a back to it, which is where it gets its name, that keeps it stiff. Now, this is the one I did, one of the ones I did have. It's a tenon saw with a ripped tooth. Um, file. But over the weekend, I picked this up. Um, I really like the wooden handle. It's a bit rougher than my other wooden handle saws. And I don't, it's, it's the finish is just rough. It's, they did a bad job with the finish. But it's a little bit thicker, a little bit bigger, a little bit meatier. But unfortunately, it's got the induction hardened teeth. So, I like the handle. I like the three points of, con of contact as opposed to the two on this. Um, but, I don't like induction hardened teeth because they can't be resharpened. Unless you are willing to take a stone and cut the teeth off. Right now, line, line this up. You could cut this freehand too. There's nothing saying that you couldn't. But since this is going to be a leg and it's going to be what your piece sits on, I, I like to keep it as square as possible. Now these are cross-cut files, so there's nothing you can do to change that. And now as you see, I'm just going straight across, I'm trying to keep it straight as I can. Now, I'm looking at my other reference line. The slots on the miter box are supposed to keep your saw going where you want it to. However, if it can cut wood, it can cut plastic. Or wood if you have a wooden one. So eventually they're going to get enlarged. So I make sure to always keep an eye on my reference line. And there we go. So, and like I said in the last video, there are pluses and minuses to doing it either way. Um, with the back saw, it's got finer teeth, which leaves a better finish. Um, the panel saw, if you come around and take a look here, it's a bit rougher. So that's something you might want to smooth out then. But 
sawing them all at once, if you get weird in either way, you're going to be magnifying that across the whole thing. So across however many pieces you cut. Cutting them individually, you're never going to measure a line exactly the same two times in a row, let alone three or four times. So every time you measure and mark, you're going to have a little variation. And that could hurt you down the road. Alright, so. But, once again, that's your choice. Those are the ways you can do it. Try both. Um, see which one works better for you. See which one you like better. One's not, one's not inherently better than the other. Um, cause like I said, each has their advantages and disadvantages. Just experiment around, find a way that works for you, and then stick with it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to clamp these. All right, now I'm going to take and just check, make sure each one's square. Look for my reference side. All right, that side's a little high, not much. Okay, check this side. This side's actually pretty good right here. All right. This here I'll probably keep as the top. Okay, let me look for the mark. It's already squared up this side. As long as these are decent, I'll keep them up top and they'll be covered up by the top shelf. And they're more than square enough. That now here. This this is a little further out than what I would like, but it's still not hateful. Okay. Now we got our legs cut. Now I just look at the legs, see where my defects are. Um, right now I'm saying I want this at the top. However, I see here a knot. And let me check my drawings here. Okay. My skirt's going to be two inches, so let me measure two inches down. Okay, and I will miss that knot. That's good. This one, I will not miss the knot. Actually, I will. All right. Well, it looks like I'm looking at looking out every which way. Finally. All right. And here, I don't have have a knot down here. But it's just a little remnant of one. But here I have a big knot. And it's, that's what I'll have to chisel out. I'm going to have to make this my, my top then. So I'll have to remove this socket here. To put my skirting in. So, so that's what I do. Make sure I get everything lined up. So... Defects, I try to hide as much as possible. These will be at the top. You'll have the, your top of your table up here. Most people aren't going to like do one of these numbers to look around. 
Um, whereas if you had them down here, they would be much more visible. So, but none, none of these knots are going to interfere with the joint itself. So, now I got situated the, the way I want. Okay. Now. I'm going to have, now I'm going to set my combination square to three, three quarters of an inch. And actually, what would have been better is if I would have kept it at two and a quarter. And then measure it down two inches. Mark it. I'm just going to do that for all of them on this side. Find my reference side, one with the X. And now I'll mark it. Now on this side it's pretty easy because I'm going to just remove this middle piece. So I'll just X that out. But here, I'll, on this side, we'll have to mark in three quarters. So now I gotta think about how my legs are gonna be situated. So I'm gonna have a skirt come in here. So do I want to have this, the other skirt come in on this side or on this side? Both sides look pretty decent. Um, I'm just looking for defects. I don't see any real defects that need to be hid. Although I do see that this knot on this side is a little bit bigger. Um, but it's okay. So I'll just have it come in off this side. So I'll mark this. All right, and that's how, and then once I get it all marked, the, mark the size that I'm going to be chiseling out the sockets in, then I would set my combination square to three quarter, and on the flat faces, marking off my reference side, the three quarter, then I would take a piece of wood that, I, that I'm using, maybe a scrap piece, and I would set that on top. It would be a lot shorter than this because I know this is the thickness I want, and then set that on and mark it. Maybe I can find a all right this is glued up but three quarter piece line it up mark it just that but well, once I had it in actual three quarters okay no well, hopefully you get what I'm saying. If not, the next one is actually going to be um, cutting the joints. 
Because we also have a secondary shelf, a bottom shelf, which we're going to chisel out for. And that's another thing, too. And that's going to be coming in three quarters by three quarters. So we'll, we'll mark all this out next time and, and cut and cut the joints so anyway thank you for your time and patience and I will see you next time bye bye